Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. So happy you are here. My goal with this channel is to bring inspirational speakers to the mic in the field of yoga, massage, body work, and beyond. Follow us at Native Yoga and check us out at nativeyogacenter.com. All right, let's begin. Welcome to Native Yoga Podcast. For those of you that are longtime listeners, thank you so much for your support. And if you're new to listening to the show, welcome. So happy that you're here. I'm delighted to present to you Lota Sebsda, who is an Ashtanga yoga teacher who lives in Sweden. And she is joining us for this session in Finland where she's teaching for the weekend. Uh, thank you so much, Lota, for taking time out of your busy weekend workshop teaching schedule to speak with me and to share your stories. And I really enjoyed this opportunity speaking with Lota. She's got such a fun spirit and just really just light vibes and just happy. And I, I really appreciate it. She has an Instagram handle that is at Lota Sebsda Yoga. The link is below. I'm going to spell it out for you though. Anyway, L-O-T-T-A-S-E-B-Z-D-A-Y-O-G-A. And then she, uh, reminds us that she's a 57-year-old Ashtanga yoga practitioner. Whoa, ho, 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 wait till you see what she can do. Woo. If you've been thinking that you are, you know, I'm getting too old for this. Well, she shows us a thing or two for which I'm thankful and grateful. And I, I learned so much from talking with her and really enjoyed this conversation. Lots of thank you. She does have a Mallorca retreat that's coming up in October of 2024. So that gives you plenty of time to... Um, to plan. And she also has some discounts that she can offer through life form yoga mats. So check around on Instagram handle. You'll see all that there. And thanks again, Lota. I really enjoyed it. and everybody listening, get ready. Here we go. I'm so excited to have Lota Sebsta here today on the podcast. And Lota, can you tell me how you're feeling today? Oh, hello. Thank you for having me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm very fine here. In the, I'm in Finland having a workshop this weekend. So I just got here a few hours and enjoying the city and uh, the warm weather. And yeah, nice. before the workshop is starting. <laughs> very cool. And you're, you live in Sweden or you're originally from Sweden? Yes, I am Swedish, hundred percent Swedish. Nice, I believe. And and <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as you know, and, <laughs> and, and <I'm, laughs> have you been to Finland before, or is this your first trip? Actually, I went to Finland this summer with my to my dear friend Heidi, and visited her uh, country house. And so this is the second time in a few weeks time. So it was very strange that I suddenly go to Finland twice mm. and I have never been here before. So nice. <laughs> in language, but it's very close to Sweden. So it's easy when you, so if you're teaching a yoga workshop this weekend, what language will you teach in? English. Yeah. We will be teaching, uh, talking English. Yes. That makes sense. Because in Finland, yeah, but in Finland, many Finnish people know Swedish language. So, but Swedish people doesn't know uh, Finnish because it's quite difficult language. So, gotcha. I don't know a word. <laughs> gotcha. I, I saw this uh, yeah. n documentary on Netflix recently called The Human Playground, and they chronicled like a winter sport that happens in Finland where they do reindeer racing, where they like they lasso a reindeer, get on skis, <laughs> and they race around a track as the reindeer <laughs> whips them around. And I thought, whoa, Finland looks so interesting. I, I would love to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> they they have it here. Right. That's we have cool. those silly things in Sweden too. It's like yeah, also reindeers, but up north in Sweden. Nice. You have it there. Yeah. So it's a quite similar to Sweden, actually. Very cool. Are where do mm. you do you teach in Sweden a full time yoga schedule or what is your 
yoga teaching look like these days? My lo- yoga life. <laughs> Your yoga life, yeah. Uh, actually, I, <laughs> I don't teach uh, much in, in uh, Stockholm. I only do workshops. I don't have my own yoga studio. I am uh, only working 100% as a hairdresser, actually, full time, nice. because I have my own shop with my companion since many years back. So that is my, my first profession. <laughs> yeah. That sounds cool though, because then you can really enjoy teaching when you do it. I love it. And I love the, the two different, uh, uh, two different uh, styles of work. It's yeah. the, and both uh, you have to be you you are with the people and uh, you you meet new people and you learn new things from people and that is very nice good point do you like there's a saying here in the states about like um say bartenders or hairdressers or like the psychiatrist or psychologist do you feel like a lot of people share <laughs> share a lot of their secrets with you when you're doing their hair <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I know everything. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious, yeah. I'm cu- right? I'm curious, Latar, and you're an Ashtanga yoga practitioner. 100%. And when did you first get exposed to yoga and or Ashtanga yoga? I, I have only practiced Ashtanga yoga and I've been practicing for 25 years. Wow. So I started with Ashtanga and I continued with Ashtanga, never anything else. I was So that is yeah. my passion. Uh, it's evident uh, when I saw your birthday post that you did on Instagram recently and you were, yeah. ce- you were celebrating your, I believe, 57th birthday. Yes. And yes. holy cow, Lota, how... <laughs> How are you doing that? <laughs> Obviously, you've been practicing for 25 years, but please, anybody and everybody listening, you got to go look at Lota on Instagram. The link is in the description below. But that transition that you did from handstand into the pike was just so graceful and amazing. So I, I thought, oh, my goodness, she's been at this for a while. Um <laughs> And and can you tell me a little bit about why you love Ashtanga Yoga? Ashtanga Yoga is, uh, it is about the same sequence sort of every day. You do it every day, you repeat it every day, and uh, every day is totally different from the last day you practiced. So you don't have to think about what to practice. You just roll on out to the mat and you you do your practice and it feels different it can be heavy it can be light you can keep it light you can you can uh, keep it keep it heavy but <laughs> <laughs> most of the time you don't want to do that but <laughs> it is a nice sequence to <laughs> to to have uh, with you everywhere you go you know Agreed. you can you can do your ashtanga yoga practice everywhere I did it in this small room at my hotel. I promise you, I didn't have much space, but as long as I can roll out the mat and the mat is fitting the room, I can practice. Yes, yes, that is amazing. So no excuse. Yeah, you don't have to travel with an elliptical machine. Yes, and and, uh, yeah. No, you don't have to find, yeah, you can find a place. You can go to to different um, uh, places in the world and you can google ashtanga yoga mysore style and you find lovely places with lovely pe- uh, people teachers that uh, you didn't even know existed and you come into the shala and you can feel the the, the air and you know it's ashtanga yoga there <laughs> yeah good point good point so that's a great point it is very nice yeah can you speak yeah. about why you started with the Shtanga Yoga? Was it by accident or was it that you someone had told you and you specifically sought it out? What was the uh, circumstances that caused you to go to an Ashtanga studio for your first yoga practice? 
Actually, it was my colleague, uh, uh, as I have uh, my shop with now, the salon, my hair studio. Uh, she started before me doing Ashtanga Yoga in a small, strange studio. I, I say strange because it was a bit weird back then. <laughs> and they they were not 100% Ashtanga Yoga teacher. They had a, their own way, but that I didn't know. I was happy to come there practicing and uh, after a while I stopped practicing there it was like half a year only and I heard about the place I began at uh, it's it was Ashtanga Yoga Stockholm it's uh, it wasn't wasn't many places back then 25 years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it was easy to get to know people it was because we were a small group of practitioners yes and so yes i started like that i continued with my old first teacher she's not old but my first teacher. <laughs> she, her, her name is gitam Hendele, mm. and she's still in stockholm but she's not teaching anymore so nice, nice. and yes i started because i was uh, i i just had uh, my second child William and I got very weak in my immune system because I breastfeeded a lot and I was uh, thinner, thinner and thinner and nothing left. And I got some allergic symptoms and asthma. And so I was really focusing on what is good for me. What, what do I, what do I need? And, um, uh, how can I build my strength back? Because it's it wasn't good for me to go out jogging as I did before because it wasn't healthy back then when I was very yeah. tiny. Yeah. So I I found Ashtanga and it worked with my allergic and with my immune system and nice. everything is good. Yes. <laughs> Things really turned around. How long did you? St how long did it take for you to start to notice positive effects? It it's difficult to say, but I think it was just half a year after. Yeah, but then I had half a year, so a year, I should say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. But That's yeah, but back then I didn't know that Ashtanga Yoga is built to practice six days a week. In the old tradition and um, you do what you want of course but and I did what how how was good for me because back then I had my small kids so I couldn't practice six days a week but if somebody had told me that you have to do this six days a week I should run from there so <laughs> yeah uh, that is also <laughs> that is also something that comes with time yeah. and we have yeah. a life to live we it takes time to adapt to the practice and and have it in your daily routine and with your family maybe your husband doesn't practice maybe your children have a lots of uh, things going on in the in the afternoons after school and you don't have time so yes life is life. I agree. I and now agree. I have plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> now when my kids are big, I have plenty of time practicing. That's amazing. A lot. <laughs> I, I believe it. I, I wonder, my, my children are still young. And so I, I often wonder what life will be like when they leave the house. How have you transitioned? Was that an easy transition for you or did you struggle at first? It was uh, sad. It was empty. It was like the the soul disappeared from the house. Yeah. It was so weird. I bet. It was. Uh, I bet. I was crying yeah. so much. I believe it. <laughs> Just those simple little so, things like uh, yelling up up to them, like, "Did you do your homework yet?" Or, "Yeah, did you brush your teeth?" <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like that's, that's can a, I you, smell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me smell your breath. Prove it. Prove it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned I that. I missed that. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> that I will, I'll make sure to appreciate yeah, you that ha- this evening. You have to enjoy them, and yeah. uh, even if it's it it feels like they never get older, yeah. suddenly they are out. My yeah. my parents they always told me enjoy when they are there, and. I didn't really enjoy. I, of course, I enjoyed, but I didn't. I didn't uh, stop. Say, uh, stop. Um, what do you say? I didn't uh, stop to smell the roses there and just enjoy. Yeah. 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 L- yes, you know what I mean. I do. Now I'm struggling with my English. I don't find the words, it's but okay. I didn't stop for a minute and was thinking how grateful I was. Of course, I did some now and then, but yeah. now, after when they are gone out of the house i miss those moments to stop for a while and just listen to the noise in the house and uh, look at all the shoes in the hall and you know i hear you i hear you how old is your oldest now (laughs) 30 30 (laughs) any signs of potential grandchildren or we have two. You have two grandkids already. Oh, that's amazing. That's got to be fun. Yes. That's got to be cool. Yes. So yeah. so now the noise is back in the house. Yeah. And the brushing teeth and washing hands. Uh, Can nice. I smell your hands? Are they clean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, it's amazing. Do, Wonderful. Do they live yeah. near you in Sweden? Do they live near you? Very. Yeah, very, very close. Wow. They, uh, very cool. It's like five minutes walk, so. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Did your children take to yoga the way you did, or did you take a very um, casual approach with them and just kind of you did your thing and let them do their thing? Exactly. Yeah. I let them do their thing, and they didn't want to do my thing, so yeah. it was easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about your grand? I don't know how old they are, but uh, what it, I hear sometimes like it skips a generation. Like the grandkids will all of a sudden be like, "What are you doing, Grandma?" Or, or you know, they yeah. they might be more interested than maybe our own children would be. Have you noticed that? Or? Actually, yes. Actually, I have done. I have actually uh, actually noticed that with the oldest that he's six now. Yeah, he is following me a little bit, but I have more hope for the little girl, two years old. She has uh, her own mat at home and she's rolling it up and he, she is uh, standing in down dog. Oh, nice. And with one leg up. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so oh. she's on it. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I noticed lots of yeah. that you, you advertise that you practice teach Ashtanga, but also focus on handstands while you're in Finland teaching this weekend. Is it a combination of both where you'll lead a Mysore and or leg class and then do workshops or do you like do very specific like handstand only workshops as well? No, like this weekend is a typical workshop I have. I have Mysore in the morning and then in the afternoon I have some workshops. So tomorrow I I think it was arm balances uh, and we are going through the asanas in Ashtanga Yoga, um, how we can uh, do the transitions and uh, what to think about. And it can go anywhere, everywhere when you do, when you start doing those things, yeah. no plans and it only happens what happens. That's cool. And then on Sunday we have the Ashtanga, um, sorry, no, <laughs> the handstand workshop. Nice. So, after the Mysore in the morning. So full weekend. Yeah, I hear you. Usually by Sunday at the end of these workshops, you're like, whoa, I'm so sore. Do, do, do you, how do you manage, how do you manage inflammation and or soreness that comes with a strong yoga? Like I, I sometimes used to wonder like, um, uh, I remember being in Mysore and having such a hard time walking up the steps 
after practice because like my knees and everything like I was so sore my wife and I would look at each other and be like are you ready here we go let's go up this <laughs> let's go up the stairs come on we can we got this we got this do but but then I meet some Ashtanga and or yoga practitioners that they're just like no I don't really get sore that much I'm just totally fine I don't have that uh, what has been your experience I wake up every morning with sore muscles yeah Sorry. It's okay. Are you there? I'm yeah, here. sorry. Yeah. Uh, with sore muscles. So uh, I feel it. I hear you. I have the same. <laughs> but it's worse when you are on a workshop, of course. When you participate in a workshop, you you work hard. Yeah. When you do your practice at, uh, practice at home, you, you do it a little less hard and uh, you don't get that soreness and yeah. you... Yeah. Yeah, you take it more easy. Yeah, you learn how to manage it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you seem extremely young to me, and I know age is just a number. Do you have people Sorry. that... <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Do you do you have people that say, like, like sometimes I'll, I'll notice, like, we'll have a group of people in the room that are practicing Ashtanga that are, you know, in their 60s and 70s, and then the 20-year-old will come in and, and be like, feel like they get wiped out like they they can't they can't believe that there's these people 30 and 40 years older than them making it look so easy yeah. in the room yeah. and uh when I watched your demonstration uh like I was when I saw yours I was like oh my gosh that's amazing like that's incredible do do you feel like age do you let age get in the way at all or do you do you think about age or do you just don't think of what is your feelings about age and your the practice as it evolves and shifts I ha it comes and goes actually. I think about age. I some days I think about age and I push it away because it's me who who decides and I believe that as long as I do this it's just a number, you know, age is just a number. I can do it as long as it feels good. Yeah. But then some some days when it hurts or if I have to move backwards a little bit and stop doing things, I get a little scared that it is age. Yeah. But also I, I think when that happens, I think, but if this was 10 years ago, I wouldn't think about the age. I would have just accepted and I'd, I would have continued mm. as mm. Good point. as normal or with that pain or yeah. so I believe I try to not think about the age I have to accept it I it's more difficult to 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 get back after a uh, injury maybe but I never rest I go back immediately and I do modifications of that position yeah so nice but I have a um, I have a like a brain that works like that i am so stubborn and uh, i love ashtanga yoga so much and i don't want to be without it so maybe that is my the way for me to just continue you yeah. know yes yes great answer have you done practice was it <laughs> it is a good answer that's helpful i feel like i feel like it's important personally to hear other practitioners talk about I, I need to hear yes. I need to hear your experience yes. because it's extremely helpful yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about these things all the time <laughs> so yes yeah I think I think I thought about it that too uh, before when I was maybe 40 40 is nothing 45 is nothing <laughs> 50 was nothing but well, you know it comes the older now you get but as long as I can do that handstand you saw on Instagram yeah. the Pike Press with yeah. Elsie. Yeah. I can run around laughing all day long. Mm. So, yeah, that makes my day. Well, Lotta, can you explain a visual of what you looked like the first time you tried it? Because I remember, like, sometimes people will come in for class and I'll say, "Have you ever practiced yoga before?" And they'll say, "No." And then they'll come into Ashtanga and then right away they'll just cross their legs, lift up into the air and jump back floating style. And I'm like, okay, 
you either had to have done some gymnastics or some martial arts yeah. beforehand. And usually yeah. they say, yeah, you're right. I, I did. I was a gymnast or, and so yeah. did that pike press lift that you do, was that something that you tried it once and went, mm, I think I found my calling. This was a piece of cake. <laughs> or was it like, how in the heck? Like what? Like what? Where, what do what? Was it difficult for you or was it a natural fit for you? Oh, no, no, no. It was like uh, I was uh, struggling a lot in the beginning. I did it every day, like with everything else. I took 10 minutes every day against the wall to to push myself up in a press. And then I continued from there. Half an hour, half a year after that, I could leave the wall. So a lot of practice. And then... Yes. Suddenly, I don't remember when, but suddenly I was thinking, what can happen if I try to put my feet through my hands? Mm. I can get stuck and I can fall on my butt, but but, <laughs> but uh, not more than that. So I tried it and then I came through. So, yeah. ta-da, yeah. suddenly. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. But it took me... You know, <laughs> I've been practicing for many years. And then when I started to really get into the handstand practice, I have done it the last couple of seven, seven years now. So I started to dig deep into the handstand when I was 49. So yes, everybody out there, it's never too late. Yeah. You were you were you were forty nine when you started to actively wait. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. What was the what was the, the thing that happened at forty nine? <laughs> <laughs> when I was forty nine, I actually saw Kino uh, mm. McGregor do a pike press or straddle press, and I was very impressed by her. And I thought, she's a stangi, uh, and she's doing that. I am a stangi. I can do that. But I didn't tell any, anyone. I was only thinking that this I will practice and I will manage to do it mm. before I turn 50. So I started to do it every morning after my practice. I added a little bit of a handstand sequence and no drills, just the pure work against the wall. And yeah. then yeah. suddenly it happened. Nice. Amazing. That's very cool. Kino is incredible. We've had a chance to host, yes. her, host her here before, and she she's a powerhouse yeah. for sure. Yeah. She is. Yes. She's amazing yes. and so sweet. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's cool. What what other yeah. aspects of Ashtanga Yoga have interested you in relation to either the pranayama and or maybe studying Sanskrit or... Uh, all these other things that come with yoga, have you been drawn into these other avenues or do you focus mostly with your daily practice? It's Yeah, it's more asana practice actually for me. And yeah. But I, I might be very late on, the, on that bit because now I am really enjoying meditation when I have time. I don't say I do it every day, but I try to sit for a, for a while after my practice or I do it before I go to bed just a small session of meditation and uh, pranayama is something that is uh, in the end of my practice so I do a little sequence there but you know the practice takes time and uh, I think that would be my call when I am older. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and uh, when I'm curious, I I t take my books and I read, you know. I now I'm into Yoga Sutra and I am stuck on one page and I read it every evening. So, you know, I am I'm going what with what I feel like doing yeah. you know yes i like your approach i feel was like that an answer it was a good answer yeah <laughs> I, I get the sense of yeah. your approach of yeah. not forcing and hurrying but just let yeah. me take my time here and and just enjoy and yeah yeah do you and also the asanas gives you uh, something the asanas is just something you do but 
it happens so much with your mind and with your body and uh, you get so calm <laughs> with the practice and you I don't feel like I have to search for something else. I'm curious and I would like to put more work into reading, uh, but I will let, let that happen when I'm ready. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> what, what, what series and or pose are you, are you still in the mode of striving toward accelerating forward through fourth series or are you are you <laughs> I'm pulling, stuck. pulling I'm back stuck. and enjoying half primary or <laughs> never never no actually no i am happy in third half uh, i'm almost in the end i should say i finished third series but i'm not proud over some some um, uh, poses that i cannot do not proud i should say that i cannot pull Fulfill, do you say so? Mm -hmm. Fulfill uh, asana because uh, I am not that strong, or I I cannot reach my foot behind, like in in Ekapadaraya, Ekaraya Pad. I don't remember the names now because it's very late here in Sweden, in mm -hmm. Finland. <laughs> it's okay. I... My, my battery is running low. Uh -oh. Do you have a phone cable? No. If we lose you, Lota, then we know what happened. And, and we're just every little bit that we get together is going to be perfect. So <laughs> if, if, if I lose let's, you midstream, let's every, keep it there. <laughs> and everyone listening will we'll know that we'll know that Lota didn't hang up on me because she was offended. She, uh, it's, no, just, it's just a I battery issue. All... It's a battery <laughs> issue. Yes. <laughs> it's a very, very bad uh, thinking. I didn't bring it. And uh, because yeah. I'm in a new place. No, back to the third series. Yeah. No, but I am happy where I am in third series and it gives me joy. And sometimes I, I do the poses with help from my teachers uh, when I am at their workshop and they help me. But, you know, because I am so old in my tradition practice. I feel like I should be able to do this pose before I continue to the next one. But that is not the situation. So I'm happy where I am. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. You know? Yes. But I am really in love with intermediate series for the moment. Mm. And you? I got up to... Porna Matsyendrasana in third series and realized I'm good. That's enough. Porna Matsyendrasana yeah. is the best place to stop. I got pulled. I got pulled. <laughs> I got pulled into it one day by my teacher Tim Miller, and oh. and I felt like every part of me was at its absolute <laughs> edge. And I, after that experience, went, "Ah, oh, that's good. I'm good." I don't need to do anymore. Yes. I don't need to do anymore. No, 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 no. And then I, I, I have some back issues that um, I don't have a disc anymore with my L5S1. So back, yeah. back bending is so challenging. But this week I, I, I had to back off from second series. But this week I thought, you know what? I'm going to do second series. But when I get to like um, when I get to Ustrasana, Lagurvadrasana, and Kapotasana, I'm just going to keep my hands on my hips and just try to lift my chest up, pull my belly in and not mm. really bend. And I went mm. through all the poses, also legs behind my head now. Ooh, I have to be so careful. So I just did like mm. super modified. So I actually am having fun approaching mm. second series again because I love Pinchamarasana and Karandavasana even though I still yeah. struggle like yeah. crazy with Karandavasana but just the thrill of trying to get up on the forearms and get the legs and lotus up there feels so fun but I so I've changed mine around a lot but I I still yeah. really love it I still really love it I just try, yeah. I just have to change that thought I used to have of like trying to like you know 
catch my heels and all that stuff. Like I, I, I just, I've had to let that go, but, but actually I'm enjoying yeah. it just the same. You know, I don't think that really has yeah. to shift yeah. it that much. As long as my main no. goal is just, I don't want to be in pain and I, I don't really want to try to do something that will put me in pain just to kind of look cool, you know, in the room. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well that, that is, uh, the, the journey with Ashtanga yoga, yes. isn't it? Yes. I love it. I can talk about Ashtanga Yoga for hours. I know. Can you? Yes. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah. when you are starting, when you are starting <laughs> to talk about asanas, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> well, 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 and when you said Purna Matsindrasana, mm. I was feeling like I need Purna Matsindrasana now. No. Oh my gosh. No. Well, no, but it is a very good pose. <laughs> are you in Purna Matsindrasana? Are you able to balance with the lifted hip up in the air? Or are you getting both hips down level and able to wrap and bind and actually sit in it without a little block or blanket under that hip? No. I need a blanket yeah. I, under the hip. Yeah. But Isn't then that, I can grab. Yeah. I can um, I can do it. Yeah. Doesn't that seem but like a, I, yeah. Uh, Impossible. Impossible. Without. Yeah, thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, for me uh, and for you, yes, it's good. But it's good to have uh, uh, something to strive for. Yes. If it's possible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, about the ca- uh, um, the Kapotasana and your back, yeah. don't you feel it's better when you do the back bends? Doesn't it get better in your back? No, because my I have a spondylosis on my L five, so my ah, my, my L five oh, it has slid forward, yeah. which is pushing right mm. on my spinal cord. So whenever I back bend, my L four can come down and get closer to my S one, and that just like mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've learned so much about anatomy after, you know, once I got, once I got an MRI, because before I was thinking Mm -hmm. if I just, you know, this must just be some cranky thing in my back and I must just be getting old Mm -hmm. and and I must just probably, I I can just keep working through it. But once I couldn't, Mm -hmm. you know, I'd have moments where I, I'd be in bed for like a week, not able to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So then I got an Mm -hmm. MRI and once I saw the pictures, I went, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, now I understand. <laughs> Even though my mind is willing, my body is saying, mm, sorry, yeah. my friend. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think adversity is a, a wonderful learning tool. Yeah. Yeah. Can sure. I run to the room with the, to the charger? Let's do it. Yeah. Carry your camera. Yeah, we'll get a, for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll get a a view of a Finnish, a Finnish conference room. (laughs) Exactly. At the hotel. And it's, it's summer. So in Finland, is it like daylight all the way through to like what Uh, time? Like you you never really get a full, Uh, full dark. It looks bright out there. uh, Yes, it is bright still. And it is now it is over eight here in the evening it's okay it's it's past eight yeah it looks kind of bright out there it's actually a beautiful it looks like a beautiful facility are you renting the, it is are you renting the conference room i have room a small for hotel the, yeah. uh, room here yeah and i'm i'm reaching my charger yes cool, cool. yay and now we are safe. Look at that. Oof. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Power. Okay. We're powered up. Oof. Yeah. I was uh, well, thank you, Lota. dressed there. Sorry. I know. No, I know. It can, <laughs> now we can talk, it makes talk me, asanas. I know. Let's makes, go. All right. Well, then on that note, um, when you come across students, like say, let's take, for example, Murichyasana D. Which is probably, yeah. would you agree that Murchyasana D is really the precursor to Purnamatsyandrasana? I just want to, maybe for someone that's Definitely. listening that doesn't know what these pose names are and what pose it is, Murchyasana D is where you say, take your right foot, put it in half lotus, tuck it in the crease of your hip, bend your other foot up, knee up in the air, and then try to wrap the arm around the outside edge of that foot, that, that knee that's in the air. What what do you what have you observed over the years with your own knees and or with working with students that that have like knee pain, 
tough, yeah. tough knee situation. What, where are you at with coaching? Like, Hey, don't put your foot in half Lotus, put it on the floor versus let's put it in half Lotus and lean back on the hands and then try to pull mm. that other knee up and lean into it. What, what do you, what have you learned and observed yeah. over the years? I believe both yeah. modifications are perfect because it depends on the person and it, is also good to do both because when you put the foot on the knee and uh, lean backwards on your hand you get a stretch in the hip but yeah. you don't put the pressure on the knee yeah. and when you place the foot on the floor instead of the lotus you get the bind so let's stay there for for five breaths there and five breaths there <laughs> so Sometimes I, I let the student do both Yeah, nice. if they feel like it and they can tell me how it was, you know, Yeah, yeah. because yeah. it's different from person to person. But I, I believe that it's really good to, instead of stopping a, a, a student, which we did a long time ago, it was, it was different back then. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, it's better they do flow through because mm -hmm. it comes later on in your in the practice it comes very good asanas for uh, for the hips and that might help the knee muscles around the knees to stretch out so it gives um, it releases the tension around the knee and yeah. so i think it's good to keep practicing as much as you can and not force. Yeah. Nice. Where is there a place in say primary series that you've thought, Hmm, I wonder if it was reversed the other way around. For example, <laughs> for example, yes. like, uh, Garba Pindasana and Kukutasana, which is legs in Lotus, slide your arms yeah. through the Lotus and rest your chin in the heel, of the palms versus Buddha Konasana, with feet together yeah. and opening the knees. Like I know like it'd be really hard. Like if you and I were to sit down and say, all right, let's revise all this. Let's, yeah. let's, let's put it in an order that seems to make sense after all these years of practicing it. Would there be anything yeah. that you would suggest or think could have been flipped the other way and it could have worked just as good, if not better? Sometimes I wonder who put that, those poses there, yeah. but that's why we do Marishyasana A, B, C, D, yeah. I think, yeah. because yeah. to prepare ourselves to, yeah. to do all those crazy stuff there. Yeah. But, um, well, it should come like in second series or something. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. But... That's you an, know, that's what do you think? That's an interesting idea. Well, I, I guess one of them that I've always thought about is um, Ard, uh, Ardha Padmottanasana, half bound lotus, forward yeah. bend, yeah. and Jani Shurshasana. Yeah. Like yeah. it, it makes sense to me. I, I understand the Ardha Buddha with the Trianga. So you do the external rotation, foot in half lotus, yeah. internal mm -hmm. rotation. So I love the pairing of that. But I always find like Jani Shurshasana A would be awesome to do before Ardhaba the Padmottanasana, just in relation from like a beginner's setup, you know, but, but it does make True. sense to me that putting, <laughs> putting Johnny Shurasana A, B and C together after makes sense because if they, if there is an A, B and a C, let's do them as a family together instead of going Johnny Shurasana A, then let's do half Lotus and Trianga and then come back mm. to Johnny Shurasana B and C. So I, I, it makes sense to me that we would, keep them in the family kind of almost like just maybe for organizational purposes or, but I, I don't know. I always kind of love <laughs> to think about all this just because I, when I do vinyasa flow, I try to, you know, work off of there these different ideas, but, but I have full respect yeah. too. If you, if you like, don't like to mix things or change things around. No, but this is so nice to hear because I have never thought about that. I have, only thought about why why did uh, Bhujya Pidasana, Supta Kurmasana come so early mm. in primary series and then uh, the rest after that is okay, a piece of cake sort of for people. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yep. But I have never thought about, it's so interesting to 
because it makes sense. Like uh, the Bada Padma and Tiang Mukaeka is uh, going straight on your knee. And if you do Yanushi Sasana family before, you are more ready to put the foot into the half lotus. And mm. yeah. yeah, maybe we should do a new Ashtanga family <laughs> series together. <laughs> that would be fun, Lota. I'd love to do that. I would love to do that. Um, but but I want to. I always want to maintain respect for the tradition. Like I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that I think yeah. I'm come up with anything better or different. Or, but I, no, but no, I, no. I do think but it's fun is, to to, is, to talk uh, about. Yeah. Yes, it's very fun. I because I've never thought about it. Now you put my my way of thinking in a new way. So it's really good. Tomorrow I will look at the students and I will think, hmm, maybe we swap. <laughs> maybe we swap a few asmas here and there. <laughs> All right. No, I was only joking. I, but I, hear you. I, I think hear you. it's very interesting pers- perspective. And I think uh, uh, it's good to play with the mind. And even if we are, we stick to the, the tragedy the theory uh, how it is and our mind what we think it's fun yeah to play with the thought and it's also nice to explore when you for instance when you have done your practice and uh, you want to try new things it's perfect to do it after your practice yeah. maybe before you do the finishing sequence so you yeah you have that left and is play that, a little bit because that was not uh, okay 25 years ago I know. it was like no 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 yeah i agree when is that when mm-hmm. you would add in your pike press research work after or sorry before or Vedanyarasana, before the back bend or were you waiting to do your pike press research work after headstands, before final breathing? Actually, I sticked my little sequence in after my dropbacks. Ah, yeah, that's cool. So there you have the Rishikasana and TikToks, but I didn't, I, uh, when, when I started to do the handstands, I didn't do myself my Rishikasanas at home i did it only uh, in a class because we didn't do it so much uh here in there in stockholm i don't know why it was not something that was every day in the or i didn't ask for it yeah <laughs> and right. maybe that was the thing <laughs> we did the dropbacks and then we did, did the finishing sequence Got but it. 10 years ago i started to do the Vrishikasan and, and TikToks. Yes. More regular. And I did it myself, but I don't know how it looked like because I didn't record anything because it was almost before it was before social media. Ooh, that's so, that's a great point. I'd love to ask you about that because like you said, if you started twenty five years ago, this must yeah. be what, nineteen ninety eight? Or somewhere around there, right? Let me think. Wait, wait. For twenty twenty three, right? No, now. no, no. It is uh, my son. It was my son is uh, twenty six. He was like two years old or yeah. something. Okay. One, one year, one yep. and a half. Yeah. He will be twenty seven. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to. Are you there? Oh yeah. Sorry, sorry. I just started thinking, and um, I really want to ask you, like. Isn't it amazing how different it's evolved and changed from pre YouTube to, I mean, remember like when you wanted to get a yoga book or you all of a sudden were like, Whoa, what is this yoga thing? And you had to go to a bookstore and you walked in Mm -hmm. and you're like, they had one book on yoga and it might've been Bhagavad Gita or, you know, a maybe Paramahansa Yogananda. This is at least here in the States. You could find Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. And then maybe like the Bhagavad Gita by Eknath Swaran or like like a classic. And that was it. Yeah. And, and then I remember when yeah. David Swinson's practice manual appeared on the shelves at Barnes. We have Barnes & Noble here in the States. was like a big like chain, yeah. book chain. And I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, like I would... 
And, <laughs> but there was no like typing in on a machine to find out like, what is, how do I do, how, how, how do I do a transition from Mrityasana D Vinyasa jump to Navasana or, but I mean, wh- yeah. what, what was, what is your recollection of that whole kind of evolution? <sighs> It was good times back then, yeah. <laughs> but but it's uh, it's better now because everything is uh, is uh, what do you call it? Everything is you could get hold of information so easily. Yes, yes. But um, I think it was good back then because we stick to the teacher and. Uh, the teacher taught you, the student, me, everything we needed to know back then. And we didn't know anything else. We didn't look at another person when we practiced. Uh, we just did our practice and we were happy with that. And it wasn't like I did the next asana without uh, permission from my teacher, I waited. Like you said today with the Purnama Sindrasana, you are happy there. When I was happy in a pose, I, when I suddenly was happy and I didn't want to have any more asana, I was content, I didn't want to move forward. That day she came there and gave me a new asana. So she knew when I was ready. And that I, I missed a little bit with all the social media, YouTube, everything. But it's not bad, but I miss it. <laughs> I think I think you stated that really well. That's, that's a good, well, I mean, that's at least, it's optimistic and positive because yeah. you know, we don't want to be the older crew that goes, wow, back in the old days, it was so no. great. <laughs> and now the world's falling apart, you know, but it's at least that what you're saying, I feel like acknowledges how amazing yeah. that really was. Like that was just such yeah. an exciting, such an exciting yeah. time. <laughs> we should never forget that. And we have yeah. to share that because yeah. that is, but it still is in, it still in is. every yeah. shala you, you yeah. have. It's yeah. the same. It's yeah. and I love that when when you see the dedicated teacher giving the student a new asana. It's like Christmas every yeah, time. It really is. And and also now I have to say something about the new times with the internet. It's amazing because it's more available to people that maybe live far away from Ashala. And it, that is so amaz- amazing with all the the um, new apps and you can go to uh, different pages and practice with uh, David Swenson on YouTube from 90s. And that is actually what I recommend <laughs> many people. If you're new to the practice and if you don't have uh, social media, go to YouTube and search for David Swenson. Agreed. It's, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I love the it's way he. Stuff. I love the way he presented uh, how about, uh, the primary series. You know, back yeah. when, when he made those videos. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. Have you had a chance to practice with David? No, and he was here recently, but I wasn't here when he yeah. was here. So, oh man, he, or in Sweden. I'm sorry, I'm in Finland, but still, but yes, yes. here for me is Sweden. Yes, understood. <laughs> understood. He's so incredible. And I remember having a chance yeah. to, to ask him because when, um, uh, when my wife and I first went to Mysore, I went because I started practicing. I ordered David Swinson's VHS and I started practicing yeah. Ashtanga to the tape. And I, I thought, oh my God, what is this? This is absolutely amazing. And his introduction at the beginning of his uh, video that he had was him doing this demonstration of like second and third and fourth series asana out on a dock, mm. like in over this mm. like beautiful, like dock yeah. setting. And I, I remember just being mind blown. And so we were in the room in Mysore and David came walking in and I was like, Oh my gosh, there he is. Tamara, look, <laughs> look, there he is. There he is. And, um, so I, I went up to him and I, and I asked him, I said, I was like, David, Oh man, I just want to let you know, like your, your VHS, 
you know, or your tape just is why I'm here. And he goes, oh, okay, hold on. And he goes, Guruji, Guruji, come here. And I was really, I was really like wanted to be a, a chameleon in the corner. Like I didn't want to draw attention. I was just like so nervous about being there. Like it was just such an interesting experience. And he's like, look, Patabi Joyce, he, the reason he's here is because I made those DVDs. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But it was because I guess David told a little bit more of the story about like when he produced that, he yeah. he didn't, he just did it. And there was a little bit of like backlash because at that time, I mean, there were, the only way you really yeah. could learn was by going to India or going to a, a teacher and, and yeah. getting access to it. And that kind of, yeah. in a sense, I feel like he was like pre, just before the YouTube slash Instagram social media idea of sharing yeah. information. So I'm mm. kind of forever, or I feel indebted to Mr. Swenson because he's, he's, he's a cool dude. That was such an amazing story you told oh, now. Thank it you, Lada. was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. So so I am curious. You have a huge following on Instagram. Can you tell me how that evolved? Like is it something that you put a lot of time and energy into or is it just kind of happened because you have you love the practice and you share your love for it? Can you give me a little bit of a, the evolution of your social media? skill <laughs> you're, you're savvy get older get older get grandchildren and uh, start uh, instagram is that how it That's started it. how many years have you been yes. do- how, long, how many and, years have you been at put, it put your legs behind the head and do a handstand that's it <laughs> no i have had it oh, six years okay yeah but you know i had another account before that got uh uh, it they Instagram took it down because I added music ah. because I thought it was cool with you, the music. You got, and, penal, you got uh, penalized. Yes. So back on that Instagram page, I had all the work I put in on oh. my handstand uh, journey oh, wow. on the press. So I don't have anything left. Actually, I have one video when I succeed. I succeed to come up from straddle and my legs are everywhere, but I came up and that is many years ago. Ooh. No. So I have, I have done it for seven years maybe. And I went, when I started the new account, this old account, I, I had in my mind to keep it simple. Don't edit too much. Keep it. Uh, yeah. Simple. And, uh, don't fix the light too much. Don't put the camera in a certain uh, place or don't buy a camera. Use your phone. No lights. Uh, but I wish I had lights. But, you know, I wanted to have, keep it simple. And I don't know. I think it got on the right, in the right hands of bigger uh, yogis on social media. So... I think I was lucky yeah. and also because of my age and what I do that inspires younger people. And yeah. that is what I really yeah. love. And uh, I really want to share that. Awesome. That you are, yes. you are never too old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You well, you're, you are killing it, Lotta. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> You have and <laughs> you have incredible skills. So I mean, I have to give you props. I mean, and then that is a really great story. That's extremely inspirational, and I like the fact that you're kind of saying like you just had fun with it and took out the like I have to be really good at this and I have to show all the perfect angles and everything and just more like <laughs> let me just yeah. be myself yeah. and and also do yeah. some serious stuff. You know, like. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Share the practice. That's so cool. Share the practice with yeah. the fluffy hair and, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> sweaty, sweaty. As uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, as it is. <laughs> yeah. Great answer. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Lota, I'm so excited. Well, I guess in, in relation to what you were saying about the fact that this is actually really good that we have this technology because I found you on Instagram 
And then you accepted my invitation and I get a chance to speak with you and you're in Finland and I'm here in Florida and we're miles and miles apart. And I just feel like it's uh, such a cool thing to just get a chance to talk to other people that, that are willing to speak with me that don't know me at all and just be like, yeah, I'd love to do that. Thank you very much. So First of all, I just want to... But you to, are uh, so lovely, so uh, it was really nice to talk to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. We'll keep we'll keep throwing compliments back at each other, but thank you. I do appreciate yes. that. Is there... I, I want to be respectful of your time. I Thank you for plugging in your camera because I did get to get a little bit more information out of you, which I really appreciate. Um, in the attempt to steer in the direction of... Shavasana of closing our practice here together. Um, is there yes. anything? Is there anything else you'd like to add or share? You've shared so much interesting information, so I, I feel content, and I don't need more. But is there anything else that comes to mind, or something else that you'd like to close with, or share with our listener to give us a little bit of motivation, and inspiration, and keep on pushing forward here? Oh my God. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Did I open a big door there, no. or, or I close the door on <laughs> yeah. you? I close well, the door. I should, <laughs> no, no. Well, maybe I should say uh, because that is also a common question. Uh, if you don't have a motivation to practice, don't think about the amount of asmas uh, because it's just to roll out the mat and uh, start in samastiti and uh, go from there and see what happens don't push yourself be kind to yourself uh, enjoy and <laughs> laugh a lot <laughs> yes that's perfect that's all i needed that was a good that's that was a, a good shavasana <laughs> yeah, <wasn't> it? <laughs> that's a good shavasana i might take a long one here after we after we hang up with each other i might uh I might I might stay here for a while after that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I am going to my shavasana bed here. <laughs> yeah. uh, next next to me, I have the bed. So cool. Well, I, I, it is evening, so I will. Um, oh, so. yes, yeah. You get it. Get some sleep. Make sure you have some good rest for your students tomorrow. Yeah. And they're so lucky. Yeah. I, I can just imagine like a, a room full of fin finish 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 yeah, practice. Finish. Yep. Yeah. A room full of Finnish practitioners just beaming when you walk in, right? They're, they're just like so excited. They're so <laughs> excited. And you're, and I, I like the fact that you're like, no plan. Let me let, me let them steer the course a little bit, right? Like, yeah. Let's see what questions yeah. they have. What do they want to, what do they want to know? So that's, that's amazing. Lata. All right. Well, I wish you well thank and you. I, I will be in touch with you and thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time for me. Thank you very much. Right. It was nice to be um, invited. All right. From well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lata. Bye. Native Yoga Toddcast is produced by myself. The theme music is dreamed up by Bryce Allen. If you like this show, let me know. If there's room for improvement, I want to hear that too. We are curious to know what you think and what you want more of, what I can improve. And if you have ideas for future guests or topics, please send us your thoughts to info at Native Yoga Center. You can find us at nativeyogacenter.com. And hey, if you did like this episode, share it with your friends, rate it and review, and join us next time. 